Good morning. First of all, I would like to thank um, Professor Roberto Land and the organizing committee for their invitation. I think it's a very exciting conference and it's really important that we do talk about the link between science, the science of learning, and education. Um, and I'm also wanting to congratulate the local hosts for establishing your national network for science for education. I think this is a great initiative and I think there's a lot that we can learn from what you have done. Um, in our university, the University of Hong Kong, we have established uh, a number of what we call strategic research themes, which are basically trying to set up interdisciplinary research teams to solve problems of major significance. And one of those themes is science of learning, and it is being hosted by our faculty of education. So the project that I'm going to talk about, the Learning Design Studio, is one of these projects in our strategic research theme. I don't know whether you feel that these two terms, education and learning, are different or not. In our place, many people take them as synonymous, but in fact, it's not. Education is what institutions do to help people learn, but whether people learn depends on the learner, and the learner needs to take the initiative to make sense of what they are trying to do. So, and I think what we are trying to do here is to try and build a bridge between learning and education. And that's also what the Learning Design Studio go, uh, wants to do. So how does learning happen? Well, first of all, it is not an osmotic or absorption process. <laughs> the learner has to be actively engaged in construction. The construction can be conceptual, it can be physical, it has to be physiological, and often it has to be physical construction. We may be building our muscles in the process of learning to run, but we may also be constructing artifacts, models, or writing. So these are constructions through which we learn. And so, and learning involves change. And so, when we talk about change, then the learner's initial state and the conditions for the learner matters very much. So learning is a, a process, problem. and through this process, the learner learns through the experience um, that he or she is going through. And so, if we were to be helping someone to learn, then the learning environment matters. So. And the environment includes physical, digital, social, cultural, and emotional. That shapes the learner's experience. So if we say that learning matters through, I mean, so how people learn is through their own experience, then how can we, as education professionals, help people learn? then we need to be designing learning experiences and learning environments that will bring about the necessary learner engagement. And in this case, then we as education professionals should be learning designers, right? And so we should be a design profession. So is education today a design profession? How many of you say that? How many would say yes? Some of you. Okay. I would say no. We are not yet a design professional. Why? Because we don't have many of the things that are necessary to help us to become a design profession, a profession, not an individual. We as an individual design. But as a profession, we are not yet a design profession. Why? We don't have a set of core design elements that we all own and abide by. If you think about, say, fashion designers, architects, engineers, 
They are designers, and they have their own formalism, they have their own design language, they have their own design tools. Do we have our own design tools? No. And do we have well-proven design principles that everyone in the profession adopts and accepts? And do we have profession-wide sorts of accepted methods to verify the appropriateness, effectiveness, and conditions for the choice of the designs? I don't think we have. So, and people may say, well, there's something called instructional design, so would that be the same as learning design? I would say no, because instructional design focuses on the instruction, focuses on the content that you're going to communicate. That could be important and it could be a resource for learning designers, but instructional design is not the same as learning design. And the need for learning design is particularly important now when we are in the age of what we call e-learning and big data and people talk about learning analytics. Now, now we have unprecedented access or we have now people, everybody have probably have heard about MOOCs and people know that there can be hundreds of thousands of learners all around the globe at very well with varying ages and with different backgrounds some of them could be high school students and many of them could be actually professionals with PhD a number of um, uh, degrees and they learn together and they and also we have um, a lot of data that is collected which we don't usually have about the learning process and the learning outcome and and so in fact i mean people a lot of people talk about the possibility or even claiming that we are now able to provide personalized learning but i would say that much of what we hear in terms of learning analytics is not learning analytics. It's be learning behavior analytics. We have a lot of information about learner engagement, what they do when they do something, but then we don't have the link between the, what happens on the course and this behavior with the intention of the teacher. So what's the course intention for learning? And what's the design principles and assumptions? And so I think we lack the conceptual and technological tools to capture the learning design as a basis for learning analytics. And um, there are a few groups around the world who has been um, working on this problem of learning design, and I really recommend you to refer to the work of um, uh, one of my collaborators, um, Diana Lorilla at the London Knowledge Lab, and they have done something or, um, called a learning designer. And um, so um, I've been working with her for, um, over the past few years, but unfortunately, we don't now have money to work together on something, and because we have um, local projects, both with K-12 um, schools and also with uh, now at the higher education level. So we've started building our own um, tool, which is um, a, what we call, a, we name it the Learning Design Studio. So the Learning Design Studio is First of all, a technological, a technology tool for designing learning experiences that make explicit key design um, elements, principles, and the sequence of learning activities and the evidence of learning outcomes possible, and um, to be able to um, identify at the design stage what counts as evidence on the learning. And also, we envisage it to be a knowledge management and professional collaboration platform for continuous improvement of theory and practice of learning design and learning analytics. So the learning design studio envisages, or we actually support the learning design as a three-step discipline process. And we want to emphasize that the design has to think about the, we are designing the learner's experience, not the teacher's instructional process. So the first step is to, um, we would want the um, designer to 
specify the learning outcomes, what you really want the learner to learn at the end. So what kind of changes do you want to see? And then what's the pedagogical approach and what's the assessment you want um, to give? So um, this is a, a, a kind of um, the screen dump of the first step. So first of all, you, um, so we are supporting the um, designer to um, specify the um, learning outcome. And the learning outcome is not only um, knowledge, but it can also be skills and um, also um, social, emotional, or metacognitive. And then um, we then so uh, ask the teacher to actually um, choose, or well, they can specify an, a pedagogical approach. And when we have a more built into it, then we can actually propose a, a, um, possible approaches. Say, for example, in this particular case, um, the teacher decided to use problem-based learning as the approach and then um, to specify the assessment. The second step then would be to design the uh, learning activity. And then this, the tool also provides a visualization support for um, helping the teacher to, under, to see uh, what, it, um, what they have actually created. And this is um, the screen dump of the step two. And in this case, um, so on the left-hand panel, you have the uh, specification of the um, learning sequence. So say, for example, in this case, um, the sequence has four major learning activities. And each learning activity has a coherent focus and purpose. And each um, sequence, uh, each step in, this, in the, each activity in the sequence can have uh, different learning types. Say, for example, in this case, um, we have, um, in the first step, we set up the investigation topic, the question and work plan. And so the, um, the teacher has to, so in this step, the learner has to, um, well, receive information. That means listen to the teachers talking and then do some investigation and then reflection. The second major step in this uh, process is conduct data collection. The third major step is construct new knowledge. And then the fourth step is produce an artifact to represent learning outcome. Okay, so, and the um, two would help, would say, first of all, ask the uh, designer to put together for each of those uh, steps in the sequence, uh, each step a coherent purpose, and then what's the inquiry question you want the students to be, to keep the focus on, and then what's the activity type? And we have actually um, focused on uh, identify nine uh, key uh, learning types, um, like say, um, creating, discussing, or um, um, reflecting. So, and then um, there is also where they would uh, indicate the mode of learning. The mode learning means we actually include the design to include not only the, um, the learning, say it can be for totally online, or it can also be for a blended or face-to-face. -face. And in this case, we want the sort of designed um, learning activities in terms of, say, for example, the teacher instruction or um, uh, sort of self-access of the learning materials, but it also has to include the student's own learning time. So we have four uh, learning modes, and then the duration of the activity in minutes, and then also the activity uh, organization, whether it's individual or whole class or in groups, and if it's in groups, what's the group size? Um, and then whether the, this particular learning uh, type uh, relates to assessment, that means it tells you something about the learning outcome, and also what's the e-learning tool that's being used. And so, and in the, and as the um, designer is using the tool to create the learning activities, you would have on the right-hand panel real-time presentation of the profile of the learning activities. And so, um, and in the third step, then it is to do with the assessment. 
So um, in step two, they have actually indicated which of the learning activities uh, relates to assessment. And then, um, so the system would present that. And then also in step one, the, um, the learner has, um, the, the teacher has already specified what's the uh, intended learning outcomes. So in this step, then the teacher has to indicate what is the, so to match the uh, learning activities for assessment with the learning outcome goals. And then the system would display in table format the spe specific assessment activities li uh, linked to each of the learning goals. And at the end of the matching process, the system would send warning for objectives that have not been covered by any of the assessment activities. And also it would provide uh, the sort of a profile of what the assessment has been um, targeting at. And currently, what we are doing is that we're working with K-12 and uh, higher education teachers to document their course design, including MOOC courses um, and use it, um, and what we want to do is to use the uh, learning designs as artifacts for, design, for discussing design ideas, professional sharing, for further design adaptation, refinement, and as a basis for building learning analytics uh, applications and visualizations. Say, for example, this is um, a course that we've been working on. Um, this is a, a MOOC course that uh, one of our colleagues have uh, just completed. In fact, in our university, only the best teachers are invited to um, put up um, courses on MOOC courses. And um, so, so this is the course page, and then you can see that the, um, the feedback has been very good. And uh, in this case, we can see that the, um, it is a six uh, session module, each has its own, it's on news, um, focusing on helping um, sorts of news readers to be. Um, um, sorts of good uh, critical uh, consumers of news. And so six topics and each topic, so you, um, in the design, the first one is more to introduce the course and uh, so there are um, lecture videos and so on and then uh, discussions and investigations and then the middle um, four are similar each on a topic and then the last one is more wrapping up. Um, another course we have actually tried to, um, to uh, use to, um, for the design studio to document is um, uh, a course in, in our sort of undergraduate first year foundation course uh, on history. And in this case, it is um, quite different from even, you can, if you look at the right hand side, for the visualization, you can see that it's actually quite different in terms of the learner, learner experience. And um, for the 10 sessions that are um, designed, then the first one and the second one is, the first one is more introducing the, um, uh, the, the course objectives and how it's going to run. And then the second session is um, the, the, um, how they're going to, uh, the basic cognitive or conceptual tools for the course. And then the rest of the eight sessions, each of them is a big debate. It's a debate on a, a particular issue around a historical scenario and resources. So it, they all have a similar structure. So, and so the visualization um, shows that actually there's only four kinds of learning types, and most of it is on... Um, discussing. Um, actually, the discussing is um, the, including the debate. And you can see that a lot of the time is also on the students' own work and so on. So our current focus is to um, build theories and tools for e-learning pedagogy and learner advising systems through learning, uh, learning design research and development with teachers. We don't, we don't research on teachers, we research with teachers. And um, so in the pipeline, uh, we are wanting to develop um, ultimately a learning design dashboard for teachers, 
um, and it would actually incorporate evidence-based principles for prompts and tips uh, embedded in the learning design studio as well as uh, design modules for teachers. And we can incorporate both from the teacher's work and also uh, incorporating some of, the some of those uh, from the literature. And then we're also wanting to build uh, a learning dashboard for students um, you know, once we have more of the learning analytics uh, done as well. And in the wish list, we would really want to be able to contribute to us uh, using the Learning Design Studio to develop an open access database of learning designs and open access database of learning behavior and interactions coupled with learning design data for knowledge building on learning and pedagogy within the global research community on learning. And thank you. <laughs>